The Russia-Ukraine conflict continued to escalate on October 31st, with both sides intensifying their activities in the east, particularly in Bogmet, Donetsk Oblast. According to the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Ukrainian Defense Forces repelled more than 45 Russian attacks on October 31st. Ukraine also continued to attack in the direction of Melitopol, Zaporizhia Oblast, and Bokhmut, inflicting significant losses on Russian forces. The General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces assessed that the situation in eastern and southern Ukraine remained difficult, with 59 clashes occurring along the front lines throughout the day. On that day, the Ukrainian Air Force conducted 17 airstrikes on enemy troop concentrations, weapons, and military equipment, and also shot down two Russian combat drones. Ukrainian missile units hit for enemy troop concentrations. Weapons and military equipment, eight artillery systems, two ammunition depots, and three air defense systems. The Ukrainian general staff said that the Russian military conducted seven missile strikes, 65 airstrikes, and 31 multiple launch rocket system MLRS attacks on Ukrainian positions and settlements in Ukraine on October 31. Ukraine Farm quoted Volodymyr Fischio, a spokesperson for the Ground Forces Command of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, as saying that Russia continued to attack Ukrainian positions in Kupiansk, Kharkiv Oblast, and intensified its activities in the direction of Bokhmut. The situation in the area remains tense, but under control. The enemy continues to attack in the direction of Kupiansk. The enemy carried out numerous artillery strikes with 736 shellings in just one day, Fischio said. Donetsk Oblast Governor Ayamoros reported two Russian missile strikes on Salidav. Donetsk Oblast, causing damage to dozens of homes and power lines. There were no casualties. Similarly, Kherson Oblast Governor Alexander Prokudin said that Russia struck a warehouse in the oblast on October 31. The attack completely destroyed the warehouse, damaged five vehicles, and injured two people. On October 31, Andriy Demchenko, a spokesperson for the State Border Guard Service of Ukraine, said that Russia appeared to have withdrawn all of its units from Belarusian territory, according to the Kyiv Independent. The situation at the border with the Republic of Belarus is fully under control. We do not record any movement of personnel or equipment near the Ukrainian border. I will add that Russia withdrew all of its units from Belarusian territory as part of a rotation and did not send new units. Demchenko said. According to Demchenko, there are still some members of the Russian armed forces remaining in Belarus, but they are primarily soldiers who are managing the remaining Russian equipment in Belarus. The spokesperson added that there are currently less than a thousand Russian mercenaries in Belarus, referring to fighters from the Wagner Group who came to Belarus to train the Belarusian army in the summer of 2022. The presence of Wagner mercenaries in Belarus was part of an agreement to end the short-lived uprising of Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin in June. Russian forces attack Ukrainian drone production facilities. Shot down a Ukrainian Mi-29 fighter jet and a Mi-8 helicopter on October 31, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. The ministry said Russian forces struck Ukrainian military and military equipment in 132 areas on the day. On the Kupiansk front, the Russian Defense Ministry said Russian forces repelled five Ukrainian attacks, destroying two Leopard tanks, three armored vehicles, two armored personnel carriers, two Gvostika self-propelled artillery systems, and causing up to 60 casualties to the enemy. In the direction of Lyman, Donetsk Oblast, Russia claimed to have repelled three Ukrainian attacks and eliminated about 250 enemy troops in the day. On the Donetsk front, 
The Russian Defense Ministry said that its troops destroyed 170 Ukrainian soldiers and destroyed a large number of weapons and vehicles of the enemy. However, Russia also reported Ukrainian artillery strikes including cluster munitions on Donetsk on the day, killing two people and injuring seven. TASS, citing the Regional Emergency Services Agency in Kherson, said that Russian forces destroyed three Ukrainian military vessels in Kherson on October 31. Russian fire also destroyed AD-30 howitzer and killed 10 Ukrainian soldiers. The Russian Defense Ministry said Russian air defense units shot down two Ukrainian drones over the skies of Kursk Oblast, Russia, which borders Ukraine, on October 31. The attempt of the Kyiv authorities to use two drones to carry out terrorist attacks on Russian facilities was thwarted at about 23.30 on October 31 Moscow time. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement. Similarly, the Russian Defense Ministry also reported the appearance of one Ukrainian drone in Bryansk Oblast, Russia, on the afternoon of October 31. The Russian Defense Ministry said the Russian air defense system intercepted the drone. On the same day, Belgorod Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said that Ukrainian forces fired about 60 shells into a residential area in Belgorod on October 31st. Three houses and one power line were damaged in the incident. On October 31st, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said that Russia would succeed in Ukraine if the United States did not continue to support Kyiv. According to Reuters, Speaking at a hearing before the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee on the $106 billion aid package, mostly for Ukraine and Israel, proposed by U.S. President Joe Biden, Austin said, I can guarantee that without our support, Russian President Vladimir Putin will succeed. The aid package proposed by Biden includes $61.4 billion for Ukraine, $14. 3 billion for Israel, and the rest for U.S. border security and Washington's interests in the Indo-Pacific region. While most senators supported the aid package, many Republicans in the House of Representatives opposed a combination of the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the Israel-Hamas conflict in the same aid package.